This video will show you some tips and tricks that might help you while you're using Ascendix. The first tip is when you're brought to any one of these tabs, typically the layout of the information is in a column view and you might perhaps want to see less information or different information than what's presented here. And so if you happen to be on any tab in this example properties, you can go over to the gear icon and select fields to display is what you want to click on. And doing that will allow you to potentially remove columns that you're not interested in seeing up front or potentially add columns from the left side to the right if you feel like they're material and you'd like to be able to see that at a quick glance. And so you could also reorder on the right side and that will determine um, behind the scenes here what columns uh, move from left to right. In this case, if I wanted um, the owner to be at the end, and the owner contact to be at the end, then doing that will update it. And when you save, you'll see that the owner has been moved to the end and county has been added and region has been removed. So again, uh, you could do that for any one of the tabs here. You just click on the gear icon and select field to display. Tip number two, also related to this concept, is if specifically for deals, because these are sort of transactional pipelines, if you feel like the list view doesn't serve you well, you can go to this icon next to the gear one and select Kanban. And you might be able, um, instead of bringing you to the screen, you might get to a screen where it says, how would you like to sort this by? And you could just decide if you wanted to sort by sale stage, that tends to make the most sense or potentially deal type, it just depends on, on where you are there. But um, here you can see that we've got some buyer up deals and these are all of the stages that our buyer up deals are in. You can click and drag if the stages are changing and that's effectively the same as going into the record and changing the stage. If I click on landlord rep, the deal, sta uh, the deal stages will change because those stages are different for landlord rep than buyer rep project management, et cetera. So um, you'll, you'll only have um, the tabs here that represent the actual deals that you have in your pipeline. So if you don't have any financing deals, you won't see financing. You'll only see those that are actually in your standard list view, which you could go back and toggle to table if you want to see it in the more traditional sense. Another tip is if you want to reorder the tabs that you see up here, it's as easy as clicking and dragging to the respective location. So you can't really remove from this um, from this toolbar here, but you can reorder so that uh, clicking and dragging around will effectively just make those changes just for you, not for every other user. And then more will show you anything else that doesn't fit on this display. If you're really interested in looking at your data in a visual fashion, but you don't necessarily want to create a full on dashboard, there is the opportunity to have charts appear that will reflect the data that you have on the left. So to the point where this is meaningful for you, you might be able to uh, look at charts or create charts and be able to look at your data in a visual fashion. One of the other questions that I get on a common basis is regarding the calendar. Although we encourage people to use their Outlook and Gmail calendars, um, many people want to be able to see some critical dates on their Salesforce calendar. This might include specific dates that are stored on a deal, like uh, deadlines and whatnot, or, or option times, um, or potentially even seeing their tasks within a calendar view, knowing very well that this, this part won't synchronize to your um, Outlook or Gmail calendars. It's just a more of a visual aspect. And so if you click on calendars, you can create a new calendar, and you could decide the object. So in this case, if I wanted to see my tasks, then I would select task, then call it tasks or just task calendar. And we're using a due date as the driver. That's where we want it to appear. Um, the due date should respectively match on the calendar on the date that's due. And also have the subject line so that we have some context and save. And now what you see here is that you have a little legend to show you the color, which I believe you could change the color, right? So if you wanted it like a dark purple, then it would reflect properly or call your attention out. And so now you've got um, a standard calendar view, but you also have your tasks um, visible so that if you needed that sort of um, visual aspect to assist you, you could see them.
So I'm just scrolling through the weeks and uh, you could also do a, a month view if that serves you better and you'll be able to see that as well. The last tip that I'll cover is actually quite important and um, I believe only admins will be able to do this on the behalf of yourself or all users. And the question that comes up here is, um, if you're converting inquiries into contacts, accounts, or deals, or if you're closing deals and they become leases and sales, there's a great deal of information that's stored on either the inquiry record or the deal record that you wish could just magically move over to the new record that's created. And so um, we call this concept mapping because essentially it takes the data that's on your original record, let's say it's the deal, and it moves it over to the sale record without you having to essentially double type. That's the objective is to ensure that you're not doing any duplicative data entry. And so that concept is called mapping and where I'm going to go is on the app launcher, which are the nine dots on the left, so click on that. And you'll want to locate on the bottom here, Ascendix RE admin console. From here, from here, you'll go to object field mappings. And essentially what this is showing you in the first place you want to go is this is all that we have in the system as far as the original record and then the fruition record that uh, comes out as a result. So when we're talking about closing a deal and if um, that deal happens to be a buyer up or a seller up deal and it will create a sale record, then this is what we would select. And this would show you that on the deal record, here are all the fields that we'd have. And on the respective sale record, here are all the fields that we have and how the mapping is. So if I have an actual close date on the deal record of 3-13-2019, the target um, on the, the, the sale record will show the sale date as 3-13-2019. So this, these are fields from the origin deal. These are fields from the sale record. And you can acquire this or delete them if you don't want them, but you can also add. So let's say I want to add my own and I want from the deal a field called, let's see, case in point here, there'd really have to be a respective um, apples to apples. So if I pick the square footage of, um, if I pick the square footage on the deal, there would have to be a respective square footage on the sale. You can see that um, this is a number field and it's showing you all the number fields on the sale record. And so there's not really one that's equivalent and that's how you would know it's it's not a good fit. Now that doesn't mean you can't go back and add square footage on the sale record. Um, if you did, it would then appear here, but just know that it's, it's because it's an apples to apple concept, whatever you're choosing to map over would have to essentially be an equivalent. So I'm trying to uh, find something that would potentially business source, obviously it does not have a respective field. So that's that's sort of the exercise that you want to be doing here is that you want to make sure whatever is coming over from the original record has an equivalent uh, place to go in the target record, which in this case is the sale. And so um, same concept if we went from inquiry, inquiry to deal if we're creating an inquiry record and we convert the inquiry to a deal and these are the existing mappings and we want to add a new one um, and then we can potentially say let's say we have description on the inquiry field and we feel like that should go in the allowance comments of the deal and click on save and so whatever data I type information, I type in the description field on the inquiry. When I convert that inquiry into a deal, those same comments that I typed in description will go into a field called allowance comments on the deal record. So a little tricky, but definitely helpful as far as helping cut down the amount of time that you're entering information twice. Hope this has been helpful. Let us know if you have any additional questions.